Rhythm control therapy is an important component of AF management and should be offered to all patients who remain symptomatic on optimal rate control therapy. We know from observational data sets that rhythm control therapy is not offered to everyone. And that is partially because of concerns of the safety. We have good data on in which patients to use which antiarrhythmic drugs. And we have a clear guidance on how to choose a safe antiarrhythmic drug in the guidelines. Antiarrhythmic drugs are not always effective, nor is catheter ablation. But catheter ablation is slightly more effective than antiarrhythmic drugs in preventing recurrent atrial fibrillation and in improving uh, symptoms. Therefore, there is a choice between antiarrhythmic drugs and catheter ablation in suitable patients when the ablation is performed in an experienced center. The recommendation for um, catheter ablation as first-line therapy is a class 2A based on smaller studies in experienced centers. In patients who failed antiarrhythmic drug therapy, catheter ablation is one of the main treatment options if further rhythm control therapy is needed, i.e. if the patients are still symptomatic. Catheter ablation should target the pulmonary veins. The evidence for pulmonary vein isolation, either with cryo balloons or with radio frequency energy, is very good. The evidence for other added ablation procedures is less good. We have commissioned a systematic review done by the Cochrane Group UK to uh, assess whether catheter ablation is more or less effective than cardioversion and antiarrhythmic drug therapy in patients with persistent atrial fibrillation. And indeed, catheter ablation, according to the available data, which is not fully robust, is more effective than antiarrhythmic drugs. There is also an option to change to another antiarrhythmic drug and an option to consider hybrid therapy. And we, in the guidelines task force, believe that hybrid therapy is an important option. Patients who have failed the second rhythm control therapy attempt should probably be discussed in a heart rhythm AF team that includes ablation specialists, antiarrhythmic drug specialists, general cardiologists, and in some instances, AF surgeons. Heart failure is one of the more common concomitant conditions found in atrial fibrillation patients. And it needs specific therapy. Um, the ESC has published new guidelines on the management of heart failure in May this year, and they are very helpful in the management of heart failure patients. Patients with both heart failure and atrial fibrillation are difficult to manage. Most of them will need anticoagulation, all of them will need treatment of heart failure, and all of them will need treatment of the atrial fibrillation. For rate control, you have an initial choice between digoxin and um, beta blockers. In patients with preserved ejection fraction, you can also choose verapamil or dutiazem. We recommend to consider combination therapy early on based on the little data that we have. In patients with heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, even the diagnosis is difficult because all the signs of heart failure with preserved ejection fraction can be present in AF patients, i.e. an elevated BNP and echocardiographic signs of a stiff heart. On the other hand, many patients with heart failure with preserved ejection fraction will develop AF. In the end, the AF heart team in patients with heart failure and AF should probably comprise a heart failure specialist or a general cardiologist with an interest in heart failure in addition to an AF specialist so that patients uh, get access to optimized individual therapy.